so we're up at screening. Get the thing up myself. Let me know more technically started. <laughs> so I, can I mean, I hit the start button, but I'm still waiting for the video to pop up itself. All right, we're live. Yeah, now we're live. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, so hello, ladies and gentlemen, again. Uh, Twitch has somewhat of a small delay, so we don't really know when we're live. We're still, <laughs> we're still getting used to it, is yeah. what it means. Uh, we have upped our technology to where we are pretty close back to what we were on Google+, Plus because I had free time and I had to tinker. Um, we are going to start this episode on somewhat of a dour note. I do apologize. This is something very personal to me. Uh, this is something I think I've only asked the community once to do something for me. That was kind of my PTC. Uh, a lot of fun with that. <laughs> but um, something happened in my personal life, uh, not to me, uh, though it does involve me. Uh, my best friend of, God, I don't even know how long we've known each other since I was 17, so 16 years. Uh Yesterday at 11.45, her husband passed away uh, due to stage 4 colon cancer and uh, stage 4 intestinal carcinoma. Uh, for those of you that don't know, carcinoma is, I believe, where tumors obstruct your intestinal tract. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, very, very painful. Uh, he was only diagnosed... Uh, around June and July, and he unfortunately passed away yesterday. Uh, there is a GoFundMe to help out, and that's where I am going to ask the community once again. Uh, I don't plan on asking you guys too many things to do. I really don't. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I love helping you guys out, I love helping the community out, but this is one of those few times where I would ask of you to give a little bit back this time. It's not to me, it's just to my friend because she means the world to me. Um, we're going to pull it up. Uh, there is going to be in the chat. Uh, here is the GoFundMe link in the chat. Uh, the description for the link for this will be on YouTube as well in the description. Once I figure out how to do that, I just got to look it up real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to share this page with you guys. I know this is not something we normally do, but this is something very important to me. So I do, so I'm not going to apologize. But this is uh, Jason. Uh, his wife is Kitty. Uh, I've been gaming with him and been friends with him for uh, Jason for a good five years and Kitty, like I said, for the good. 7, 16 years. Uh, this is where, follow the link if you're on Twitch. Uh, please donate if you can. If not, I understand to share it. Get it out there. She, he was the primary financial provider for, between him and his wife. And with him gone, it's gonna be a little bit before she can get a job. Um, and uh, here is the photo of him after he's passed away with uh, Kitty right there. Uh, her parents, unfortunately, his family was still driving in from, uh, I believe, California uh, while oh. he passed away. Uh, was this like they had, like, they, they kind of said it was going to be, like, days? They, I'm assuming at some point recently? No, like, he went to emergency surgery on Tuesday. And they were coming down from California to Arizona. I don't know where exactly in California they were, but uh, the procedure lasted through the night. Uh, then he got out, and then he passed away in the afternoon uh, Wednesday. Uh, the other people you see around him is from his National Guard uh, Battalion. Uh, they came and watched him pass. Uh, that's really all I'm going to ask of you guys. Uh, yeah. Just donate if you can. If not, please share it and get this out there. It's going to help her a bunch. Uh, they have 
kids in the way of pets. Uh, I I really can't say anything else, or else I'm not going to be for, for the rest of the show. But uh, here it is. Uh, links in the chat. I'll post it a little bit later. Uh, it will be on Facebook. It will be. It is on the Total Justice Facebook page. I did post that. I did ask if you guys could help and donate over there too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on my Facebook page. It's on his Facebook page. Uh, just, you know, do what you guys can. I know we're a close knit community. I don't ask anything from anybody too much. Well, from this community, I ask for a bunch of crap all the time. But uh, in this circumstance, it, this is to help out somebody very near and dear. Um, so just please, if you guys can do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Any, any of it helps. Any any amount helps, from five dollars to somebody paying the whole fifteen k. Um, any bit helps. I'm gonna be doing something else with this later on too, hopefully. Uh, with that said, we are gonna actually resume the rest of the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, thank you for the time. We're gonna move into well, actually, we are going to have a little bit in session. Cut back to Jesse and I, so we can. Have Jesse talk about his experience in the Michigan PTC. We're going to give you guys the rundown. And then I, after 13 years, went back to playing Magic this weekend. So we're going to, I'm going to tell you about what it's like to play Magic after 13 years and not do that badly. <laughs> so, Jesse, what was it like? Well,. well it, it was, was great. great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I this is my uh, I, I had him back to the Michigan BC I missed last year. I was uh, unable to attend, and I kind of decided I needed to be there. I needed to be a part of the community. I you know, and I was ready to get in on winning or at least performing well. Um, I had come up with a deck, as everybody saw, I top eight it with Iceman. Uh, I am all in on Tengu Dive. It is my favorite card in the new set. It is my number one card. Um, I hope that I can continue to prove people wrong, and it's, fi it's fine to play a one check. It's fine to play many one checks. Uh, I did a deck profile with UFS University, uh, you know, fellow content makers for UFS. I can't wait to see it posted. I was I'm probably a babbling idiot by that point in the day because I was exhausted, um, but I had a great time. Uh, I, round one, played against Miles Tyler. He, my deck decided, game, week, day one, you know, week, game match, match one of the day, decided just to completely flop on me, and it sucked. <laughs> I thought my day was over already. I went, I was oh, I went oh one on camera. That was lovely. Uh, round two, I played against uh, James Stephen Stevens. Uh, I can't remember his last name for life of me. Um, and he was playing his Life Eva million card deck. Uh, we had a really really long game one, game two, game two and three. I just went all in, and my deck decided to perform. Uh, Round three, I played against Chris Smith uh, from the uh, Chicago group. Uh, he's playing Fire Napalm Man. Game th we went to game three. He left me at one life. And if I've learned anything in UFS, if you leave your opponent at one life, you've gone in so hard that you're gonna you're gonna lo possibly lose. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I got him. I got him at the end. Uh, round four, I played against uh, Slam who was gracious enough to let me stay with him for the weekend. Uh, I even had my, I had a bed and everything and it was great. And I paid for it. I, I paid for it gra gratitude by giving him a bunch of Neil Max comment on comments he needed for a stockpile. Uh, thanks for that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't alluding uh, to anything. I swear. Oh, it was fine. Uh, <laughs> He was playing Life Turbo Man. Uh, it was definitely we. I think we were pretty sure going back and forth on the idea that it was gonna be a whoever won the won the dice roll, and that's what it turned out being. 
Uh, I won game one. He won game two. I came back on game three. Uh, it was three and one. I had come back pretty. I, was, I was thought I was safe. Then I sat across from Chris Pratt in round five, and he did not want to ID. He wanted, he wanted Swiss champ. He wanted to fight. He wanted just to exo this tournament and you know, come in into town to see family. And that I'll say one thing: Chris Pratt is a is. I I understand his method. It's like every because he had to play. He made me play. He made everybody else have to play. Yeah, because it throws off the number so much. Because if I had beat him, it could throw off who an X, you know, a three two from getting in. But if he beats me, he moves me to three two, and it allows more three twos to get in. So literally everybody had to play last round under the safe. There was like no draw real options available, which is pretty cool. Well, I mean that's what you get for uh, card battling a legendary star based outlaw. Mm hmm. Uh, so he beat me with, uh, that death napalm man deck, which is, I, I couldn't get a game off of it. My deck on stream, you watch the stream game two, I went a build two, fail my third go. He destroys my foundation about one. He plays homing missile. I'm at zero. It was done. That match, that match was done and over before we even got started. It sucked. Um, and I took, I got it. I just said like, well, I, I can beat the fire version. I can beat uh, the void version. I can not, the death version just has so many answers. I didn't think it did, but it did. Uh, so cut the top eight. I skim him on a really strong strength of schedule. Luckily, you know, miles top aided, Chris top aided, uh, and a lot of my others uh, were three twos or better, so that helped a lot. Uh, so I made it in. I had to play Chris Pratt again. Uh, after originally, we had some issues. Sean had to go through and grind the tournament out and make things work, but he did it. And we had a top. We had, so we were able to put it together. I won, so I play against Chris Pratt. Uh, he just wipes me again. My deck just, my, I tried. My deck was just like, I got a four build game one. And then I just like average, and I tried to go in and he just had all the blocks. Like I couldn't draw Yamato Flying Spear. That's what I needed. He He's like, he's like, I had one chance to kill him. And he's like, you need to draw Yamato Flying Spear. I'm dead to it. And it's like nothing. Just I drew, I drew low. I drew my ice slashers, which I checked a two on, and it just the game was over from there. So I, I, I came in this place. I was happy. Um, I think the only thing I came from the tournament is Iceman is a great character if you're willing to play. Uh, what I, like big boy UFS? I was playing seventeen two checks or less between my attacks. Uh, it was high risk, high reward UFS. It was amazing. Like when my deck wanted to go off, my deck went off. and my deck didn't, it did not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, congrats, congrats to Mason Johnson, um, winning with, uh, order Kim. Uh, he somehow, he had the math together to beat Chris Pratt in the finals. I thought Chris was going to take it down. Now. I'm horrible with names and faces, and that's because I'm not with some of these newer players. Yep. A whole bunch. Mason is the one who usually plays Clark out of Omaha, right? Um, yes, I think so. He played, I know he, he won the PDC in Abilene earlier this year. Because I actually, when I went to message him on Facebook again, I saw the message from the that paper, that um PTC, and I'm like, oh. He won previously. Good for him. So this is the second one. So good for him. It's the second PTC he's won. Nice. Um, cool. So, yeah, he is. I watched him play some games, and I. If one thing he takes is he's willing to listen to when an issue goes wrong. Um, he had a match against Jeremy Ray that he had the numbers and he had the right. He had all the cards to win, and he just. He, he he knew where he messed up, and it took. And once once he was showing that, he used the exact system that we that it would have won him a game against Jeremy Ray in the top eight or a, a Swiss to beat Chris Pratt. So. Oh, there we go. 
Uh, thank um, you for to General Reaction for following us. We are yep. really, unless something cataclysmic goes on, like last week where I came down with bronchitis. I was, and I was dead. I was just out of it. From the, uh, so let's do a quick rundown of the top eight. Give everybody their, their, their dues. We have, obviously, Mason Johnson playing Order Kim, first well, place. On, we have one, I have one question before we hop into this. Sure. Was there a whirly ball? There was, but a couple of things happened that kind of screwed us over. Um, we stopped for dinner at Swiss Chalet, uh, about, you know, somewhere about halfway through Canada. And we were there for an hour and a half for food. Okay. That really, yeah, that slowed us down. And then we were so down another almost 30 minutes of the border getting into the U S that sucked too. Cause there was only like one station open. The other no, go ahead. Oh, it's, I got there just at the end. There was a lot of drunk people playing whirly ball. I was sad that I didn't get to enjoy it. But, you know, we have whirly ball here in Rochester now. So I'm going to probably have to go play. Me and Sean are going to go play some whirly ball soon. Okay. The second question I have about the Michigan uh, PTC. Was there okay. the Andrew Alexa hot dog eating competition? I don't believe so. Uh, Andrew Alexa actually didn't play. Uh, he was there. I got okay. to say hello. I got to say hello to him and Keith Despero, but neither of them played. It was, it was Jeremy Ray, Marcus, uh, Phil Birch, and Slam, and I think those were the only Detroit players that were playing. But I feel like, like Phil went back up. <laughs> I I don't know where I think Phil's living there back there now. Phil's all over the place. Um, yeah, I I mean I don't get it was a good tournament. It was fun. Um. There were some really interesting decks that were played. Uh, a lot of them we're going to see deck text done by UF, uh, UFS University very soon. Uh, check them out as they post them, guys. They're great. Uh, Phil Birch was playing this Jiffany Jambers life deck that scares me. <laughs> like, I, 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 I thought Turbo Man scared me. I'm like, Turbo Man could do a lot. And then I watched the Turbo Man draw some cards. Good job. But... I was actually scared of playing against Phil Birch, and I'm happy I didn't get that matchup. <laughs> All right, so we are going to now switch over uh, after a small bit of inception to uh, the uh, for, uh, new Jesco game forums, as we once again have reacquired that technology for this show. <laughs> to be able to, to be able to scan through and look through the look through the, the decks. Yes. So I, I, I don't have the video up, so I don't know what we're seeing right now. I just yes. have the I have the I have the Twitch chat up. That's all I have. Uh yeah, I we have up uh, the Michigan Pro Tour screen from the forums. Okay, cool. And uh, you just need to tell me when to scroll down. All right. So first up, we're at uh, we're getting Mason Johnson in first place playing Kim. Order. Kim. I, everybody's like everybody's done the math. I've done the math. I actually have to start digging through the archives on this. Kim, since its true inception, has won or done very well consistently as a deck at a lot of PTCs. And it's always like it's now in the last year and a half, it has really picked up in its ability to win. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if at Nationals or at Worlds, pending the time frame, which, yeah, Worlds this year, if it's aiming for the April date, they're saying now uh, – Rule of Time will still be legal. Kim will, could win one of those two events. That's all I got to say. Uh, but yeah, Order Kim, good job. This deck scares me. It's 12 attacks. It doesn't need much to win. It will just steamroll you. Uh, let's go to second place with Chris Pratt. Uh, was there any big changes made because of Battle of Power for Kim? Uh, or is this just a very straightforward still game? He got, I mean, this is the first version I've seen with Partners in Crime Fighting, which is the Jerry Murray Champ Foundation. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything really new this deck gained. It's an order deck. A lot of its stuff pretty much existed in the game. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's just a deck that's just another build of it. Okay. And we got Starlord. Oh Lord, Chris Pratt playing Death Napalm Man, the, the awesomeness of this deck. Um, 
V after playing. I played two two matches against this deck. Um, I thought Napalm Bomb was the scary card of this whole deck. What? It's homing missile, isn't it? It's homing. It is. <laughs> homing missile is scary. You you think a three mid for four with an okay ability is okay, and then you're just like, that card just blew me out of the water. Like, it, it's pay three life or let them destroy a second foundation of yours, and it has range, so it combos with shield ram, and it, it just has all the and. Like, you're just like, it's a three for four. I get to burn you for two. I get the possibility for another two or, th or three or destroy your foundation. Um, yeah, those, like, Napalm Man's good. Those two cards just make him, like, insane. So you believe uh, that our initial prognosis, uh, our initial, what's the word I'm looking for? Our initial thoughts about Napalm Man were absolutely correct. In the right build, he's yeah. just beyond. Yeah, in the right build, he's on, he's on fire. I, I thought it was fire. I didn't think Death was the build. I thought that Death was going to be the cute build with him. No, Death's the build, I think. Okay. It just had so much. Um, the other new card, the other cool card, uh, two cards that are very, very, and then very underplayed. One is Blaze Whip he's playing. It's a 3 low for 3. Um, if it's blocked... They have to add a foundation up. You have to add a you have to drag a foundation up. It's like Blazing Storm if you block. Okay. Uh really good in this deck once again. I was really wondering uh, when that was gonna actually see play. Yeah. And then Egg Drop was the other one he was playing. Uh, Egg Drop it, it drops a three eye for three with a three low plus three low block. Uh powerful two weapon ranged. Remember. Weapon, or, it's, it's weapon range, yeah. Oh, yeah, this uh, is that Slash Man card, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's like, like, seal it, they, they, they make, make your opponent discard a momentum, which, in this format, is, is a thing. thing. Like, like, he blew, like, I had a chance of killing him, I mean, he just went, like, egg drop, egg drop. And I'm like, well, there's my momentum. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um... Uh, he was playing Hakatsu Deaths to bring back his cards from his momentum that hit. He was playing a powerful assassin to draw cards. It's just a good deck. You, you can't you can't deny it. Um, good job, Chris. It's really really scary. Yep. Uh, we got J Ray, J Ray next. J Ray J Ray played his uh, played his pet deck. I'm happy. This deck was. This deck was uh, something. Uh, this was three dot Mega Man he was playing, uh, off of off of good. Okay. Uh, so he's a, the deck's objective. If you probably you can tell if you look at it properly, is to Astro Crush you out of the game. I was gonna say this is an Astro Crush deck, isn't it? Like this is very much the if you were to tell it if I was to sell this deck to a new player. Uh, this this deck could be really much different. Like you need to buy, you need Mega Man's, you need one dot Mega Man's, and you need Astro Crushes. That's what I tell. And then everything else is like starter stuff and you know commons. Uh, the idea of this deck is to value and poke your opponent until you think you can just kill them. That's about it. So uh, I got a question: Is Astro Crush now officially more dangerous than Rain Flush? In Mega Man, it is. Okay. I, 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 it's not. A, you have to be playing a stacker, like for it to be worth anything to you. It's like unless you are playing a guy who has two or three. Like I watched him do it, and he had three characters stacked, and he just went like, played Astro Crush, like he max valued a turn, like it was a kill turn. He was like, play one attack, uh, play a Yamagurai, and then went draw a card. Drew the second Astro Crush, and I'm just like, and I watched him go, played the Astro Crush, pop motivation to put Ash, put Young Rai into his momentum, put him to four momentum. He went multiple one the first one, and then went, and then he just like literally had a handful of cards, and he just committed his opponent's board out. Oh, good. Uh, it was so good. It, it, I this deck is a thing. It's great. The other question I have is, is there a particular reason why he's not running any Mega Man two? I don't think he needs it. Okay. That's my I, my assertion, my assumption. He doesn't need it. Okay. Uh, big card out of this deck. Uh, 
was suspicious Mr. X was is ridiculous in stackers. Uh, it commits a foundation or asset with difficulty X or less X equals the amount of characters you have in play. Uh, and it also gets to play crime fighting. You want to take over? You want to deal with a wall deck, a deck of problems? The deck is playing crime fighting. It it, it looks painful. Yeah, <laughs> good yeah. job, Jerry. I was really hoping he'd make the finals because if he, if he, I think he had like the one of the characters that had a really good chance against. I think he could have had a good chance against Nate Paul Man in the finals if he made it. Next up, we have Mr. Lonely Wolf. Yeah, Miles Tyler. Um, I played him round one. Uh, this is a different tarot deck. I'm just gonna say that. It's my best way to describe it. Um, this deck is about this deck is about 70 cards. It it is not a control deck. This is a I'm trying to kill you as quickly as possible. The plan. That's the plan. Uh. He, I, I, I misinterpreted the deck. I, I expected him to go build, go, build, go, play self destruct when he had the when he when he was behind, build, go, and then like turn three he just started wailing attacks at me, and I'm like, I did not expect that. I really didn't expect that. Uh, he's playing Yamato Slam, which is an, go ahead, which is an amazing reversal, like or just a card in general. It was. Just, it's gain a momentum or draw a card if your opponent has more ready than committed foundations. Like, okay. Yeah, I was about he to just... ask, like, what does uh, Yamato Slam bring to the board? But you just went went for it. Yeah. I mean, it's a reversal. That does, it's a five damage reversal. That's what it really is. Uh, yeah. Good job, Miles. Uh, keep it up. I hope I get another chance to play you at uh, Worlds. So the other thing I'm seeing in here is that's out of the ordinary that I've not seen in this build before is uh, Racing Rivals. Yep, yep that's, that's a new, new card. card. Um, Racing, Racing Rivals. Yeah, that's, that's the new. That's one, one of the new cards. cards. Uh, Racing Rivals is the is a one five. Discard momentum to ready it, and then it's also if it's discarded, at it face down in the top card of your deck to your uh, to your stationary face down. Okay. He was also playing Whooper. He was playing 1x Whopper. Whopper, Whooper, whatever you call it. Whooper. Playing 1. I, I don't know if it was good for him, if it did all, if it did the work, but it must, if it made the deck, I'm assuming he tested it enough that it was worth it. I got nothing. It's, wo it's Whooper. <laughs> yeah. But if he can make it work, he makes it work. Mm hmm. All right, uh, next up we have Danielle. Yep. Uh, Danielle, Danielle played uh, Ryu. Ryu. Just the yeah. Giggles Con made famous Ryu deck with some with some little bit of upgrades. Um, now, I'm going to give my opinion on this deck. I think this is, this. if everybody thinks that this is what Giggles is walking into with uh, Nationals, you're very wrong. We've been testing a different build that... I think, I think does, does more damage, damage overall. I'm just, just gonna warn people. people. It's, it's really stupid. stupid. Uh, it it's scares me. Stupid. I know I mean, this whole deck's deck stupid. stupid. The, 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 it's just it, it's, it's so, so straightforward, and it, it, it just you do the math and win sometimes. Uh, there, there are some, some numbers, numbers I I agree with, and there's some I don't for this deck. Um, it's definitely a it's definitely a choice build. There's cards in it that are in other decks that aren't in that, that are in Giggles deck that aren't in this one, uh, but it's it's a deck that's objective to go the long game, uh, and it does that very well. Uh, good job, Danielle, uh, playing the deck. Uh, but yeah, if everybody's thinks, if everybody's looking at this thing and like, oh, this is somewhat what we're expecting from Giggles at Worlds, it's it's all over all over the place right now. Actually, I still need to play with him. I have to test with him tomorrow because. I have to make sure you've done some changes. Okay. Uh, next up, we have this one guy named Jesse. We don't know anything about him. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, this is what I played. Um, I, I'll tell you something really funny. So, UFS, the UFS uh, University guys asked me, so what's your tech? 
And I'm, I'm like, like there, there is, is no tech. tech. The, the deck, deck is all tech. The, the deck, deck is tech. Is tech. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. My whole plan was to play through as much of the insanity of the format as possible. I was expecting a lot of more revokes. Uh, so I kind of hoped the out- that's why the hour leagues, so many hour leagues were in the deck. Um, the winners of the weekend, stunning new look. If I go first and I play Stunning New Look and I get there, it allows me to give me a seven hard hand size on turn two, which usually gets me enough to win. Uh, yeah, I, I really, there's nothing special. Like, everybody's like, where's the tech in the deck? I'm like, there's there's no tech here. It's I'm going to play gigantic attacks with multiples, clear the multiples, and then play another gigantic multiple. That's my deck. And the shining star of this one was Tengu Dev, correct? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Tengu Dive was uh, the go-to distance, distance plan. Was, was like, like the idea of going, going play a multiple, multiple, clear the multiple, multiple play Tengu Dive, dive draw three, three, clear the Tengu Dive. dive. Um, like, like this deck was, was just, just – I was softballing so, so many cards out of this deck just at people. Like, like I'm just going to softball Tengu Dive and see what happens. And people did not respect it sometimes, and they just died because of it. But – the uh, Fuego Yamato Supas or Yamato Flying Sphere, that was my that was the big card of the weekend for me. Like the fact that I could just play it, say like against decks that I know we're running multiples, and be like six high for six, multiple six high for six. They both have safe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number seven was Broberg with Turbo Man. Yeah, uh, Kevin was play, playing this amazing, slamming Turbo deck of Doom, Turbo Man deck of Doom. Um, it needs some, I think if he does play it at, at Nats, he needs some more work maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Turbo Man's Turbo Man. Now, is this similar uh, to the build we've been you've been talking about on the show for a bit, or is this yeah, kind of like the beast cannons, beast cannons uh, stuff, the slams? I don't know. I, I the deck I played against two versions of the deck. I watched I watched him play this version a bunch, and then I see another poison play a different version, and they just didn't impress me. Like I just like watched them play, and I'm like, this is this is what everybody's so scared of. Uh, I mean, I'll run face first into these decks all day, personally. I just, I think that they give up. They tried it so much to make a deck get somewhere, and so you would I, say the honeymoon is officially over between you and Turbo Man. You're, it's no longer as impressive as you thought it was, or is it just this? It, it is. It's, I, maybe the build's not made yet, or maybe the build wasn't played. All right. Uh, finally, in eighth place. Uh, Marcus Singleton playing Earth throws Yori. Oh, that just see that just sounds mean. Oh, um, if I'm gonna say very straightforward, he got a he got a game loss in round in top eight because he forgot to put a card in his deck, and that's really sucked for him. Um, cause I think he would have, I think he was at, when I looked at the top eight, he was my, he was like, I could see him possibly going the distance. Cause there was people he just played all day and they're just like, he just wrecked them. Like spider, he went like play starter suplex, lose two. If it deals, it gets removed. Minus two, minus one more life. Give it plus two damage. Do all my other effects. And then it's like, hit you. And then like remove the spider suplex in the game, play another card. Yeah, it was just big damage. Well, as we know in UFS, big damage usually does get the job done. Yep. All righty. Yeah. yeah, one weekend uh, I got to try some great places around uh, around Detroit. Slam treat me to breakfast Saturday morning. At, it was like Doc's Good Food, local diner, yummy food. Uh, went out to this place for drinks uh, Saturday night. We actually watched the finals on Chrissy's phone on the Twitch on the Twitch stream at the uh, restaurant that we were at. That was great. Uh, and then we had we went to 
breakfast slash brunch at this barbecue joint on Sunday. Um, it was amazing. <laughs> oh, it was a great time. Well, that sounds fun. Uh, during my weekend of that Michigan PTC, uh, I went and uh, tried my hand at magic after a good 13 years. So the... It's not really irony. It's kind of funny coincidence. The last time I played Magic, as we all know, Kaladesh is a very artifact-heavy set. Uh, the last time I played Magic, it was Mirrodin. So I just, like, you know, started at one artifact set and decided to pop back in in another artifact set. <laughs> just funny coincidence. Uh, over the course of both sneak peeks, I did both of them that Saturday. Uh, combined, I went a total of four four, so I went two two both uh, both PTs, uh, not PTCs, sneak peeks. Uh, mm -hmm. Played red blue first time. Uh, my first deck was a red blue uh, vehicle build, which mm -hmm. I got that train that has uh, the becomes a uh, six five with trample for four. Oh yeah, the one that looks like a mammoth. Yep. And then I've got the uh, card that gives a plus three, plus three in Menace. <laughs> and just literally railroaded over everybody for two matches. Uh, I also learned that you can actually, on the opponent turn, the opponent can crew a vehicle to make the vehicle block. Uh, so yep. that cost me a game. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a couple of things I saw some people um, what well, reading about some people who played at pre-releases and some of the things that happened. Uh, there were some really cool like interactions. Uh, I, I I got home Sunday and I actually a friend of mine had open, won a lot of packs ooh. and I went over and drafted with him and <laughs> I got to draft with a few other people and I got to play some of this new stuff. This is uh, really fun. Yeah, I, I drafted, I drafted like white red, the white red aggro deck, um, with zero vehicles, oh. and my friend, I actually no, I did have one. I had the smuggler copter, which was stupid. Oh, that smuggler copter is like one of the best things ever. Yeah, the two cost three three. It's, it's tap a dude, two, tap a dude, and attacks and loots. It's just like okay, I'll take this. Um, yeah, that was so much fun. Uh, and I just, I was, I, we opened nothing of value and I'm like, whatever. I wasn't even paying for the packs. Um, so I, I did open, I did vote at the event, this place we were running the thing. I had traded, they, they had a mat. I had a, I brought my extra mat, random magic cards and I traded in enough for one of the new starter, the Chandra starter. That thing the new is one that so terrible aside from the flame lashes. Well, here's the thing, because the flame lashes are actually have value. Yeah, but I that's... didn't realize it. Oh yeah. So no. I the the Chandra's terrible, but I wanted to open two packs of the new set. Okay. And I and I opened a uh, a sort of fire and ice invention. Uh, See, there invention. you go. The masterwork. And I was like, I made somebody very happy when I when I sold it to them. <laughs> Yeah, so my first match was against all people. The uh, guy that came with me, he's a friend of mine, works at GameStop, came with me. Uh, very first match of the day was him. Against him. He was uh, playing green-white. Uh, he loves that build. Um, he actually managed to pull uh, the Planeswalker for that one. Uh, game two was a blue... Uh, a blue red flying deck, which she pulled the planeswalker out of that one and copied that six mana sky whale, the six, six oh, sky nice. whale, and just like trounced me. Uh, three was against a black white deck, and I guess black white doesn't really uh, gel real well right now, or black white. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's I more just... of a It's more of it plays efficiently. Yeah. It, I think it's right. better constructed than it is in a limited format. So Railroad just, I got crewed up with one of my cars and my trains and just ran right through them. 
Then uh, game two was a servo, uh, uh, black ant servo deck mm -hmm. with Puppet Master. Uh, yeah, so he had ants, which got bigger, and then Puppet Master and the ability to generate service, and he just overwhelmed me. Mm -hmm. uh, game two, uh, or sneak peek two, I drafted again red-blue. Uh, very fortunate I was able to get the colors I wanted both games. Uh, this time I went, uh, did actually not get that many artifact uh, vehicles, which was kind of surprising. Uh, but I did get a fair amount of energy generator. Energy generation and uh, creatures that use energy generation. Uh, including two of that 4-2 uh, door buster dude that says pay, oh. an pay an energy target creature can't block. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, and again, I got that uh, one uh, single red mana 3-3 three, three trample thing. So swing it in for seven, you can't block. Um... Gosh, what were the games on that one? Uh, another red, uh, a black red ant servo deck. That was, that just crushed me. Mm -hmm. uh, a blue white deck, which I got very lucky and got both games. Uh, game three was another green white deck that had that flying dwarf with vigilance and that new hawk. Oh. Uh, and then just uh, the mana ramp in green right now is really good for all the spells I got because it's and it was an energy green white deck so that was really really good. And then um, God, what was the other one? Then another blue white uh, blue red deck which I pretty much ran through because they got mana screwed. Hmm. So like I said, uh, for a thirteen year break going. 4-4 four, four out of two sneak peeks. It's pretty good. My big haul was that I pulled two Torrential Gear Hulks. Uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, my friend got uh, the Masterwork uh, Ring of Vox. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was really happy with that. Uh, and that was my magic thing. Uh, I'll probably be doing magic lightly here and there. Um... At least till Final Fantasy drops next month, and then I'll probably shift all the focus to Final Fantasy. I can see that. Uh, I'm kind of on the... I, I'm waiting to see how the financials pop together. I definitely want to try it out and see what happens you with the, the game. Playmat. What? You want that Final Fantasy VI playmat. Yeah, it looks amazing. <laughs> you may not play the game, but you're definitely going to be getting that playmat. It looks, it looks great. I mean, why not? Uh, Corey, yeah, we, uh, did the Michigan PTC rundown and whatnot. Uh, now we're just kind of going through what the rest of the week was. But, dude, thanks for joining. Um, and to General Reaction again, thank you for following. Uh, I don't remember who is General Reaction. He's in the forums. Um, don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, dude. It's just been a really long, rough week. If you were here at the opening, you'll understand why. Uh, Corey, don't worry about it. You know, we're still talking UFS. It's just a little small tangent on what I was doing during the Michigan PTC week. I just did magic because I just wanted something to do and it not be card fight Vanguard or future card buddy fight for a change. Uh, what do we got next for PTCs? Uh, well, next... Uh, there's a PTC in uh, before Natsdale. I think there's one in uh, Reading coming up. All right. One in Reading. Then there's Nationals at uh, in Atlanta, and then Rockford, then Poughkeepsie, then there's one in Omaha, and then one in Reno. I think that's the rest of them. Yeah. It's gonna be busy. I know it's. I know it's somewhere in that number range. It's gonna be. It's gonna be busy. Uh, hopefully we'll see what the player of the year points will get updated this week. Uh, we'll find out what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, it's. It was fun. I can't wait for nationals in two weeks. Uh, I'll see everybody there. Uh, I'm going to 
enjoy myself because I want I want an act. I think one, that's actually more vacation that event, that weekend than me than this was. Oh. Like I go to play you up fast, but that's what I, I nearly like, forgot to talk about. What? Uh, that um, Gunship Revolution put out a piece of Sea Viper artwork. Ooh, so yeah. So a lot of us are speculating that this is either the artwork for her character card, which I am totally down with, or this is one of her attacks. Either way, the artwork looks good. Uh, some people were confused. Uh, guys, please be aware that the Street Fighter set is Street Fighter in its entirety. We are not confined to a certain Street Fighter number. Yeah, it's unlike the Mortal Kombat set, where we're only we're locked into the most recent Mortal Kombat set. And only the Mortal Kombat characters. We will not be getting guest characters. Yeah. Uh, That'd be amazing. <laughs> what is the other thing we need to talk about? Oh, yes. Uh, Battlecon News. We do have Battlecon news. Uh, please be aware that Trials of Indians Kickstarter has started up. Uh, we have a full rundown of characters from the journalists over at Level 99 Games. Uh, hopefully at some point we will have Brad back on, as it's probably easier on everybody now that we're back on Twitch, uh, to do interviews a little uh, quicker and better. Uh, but definitely go hit up Trial of Indies. Uh, Trials looks really, really fun. Uh, I've been uh, on the Skype uh, BattleCon playgroup. Brad's been on there. Uh, a lot of the guys have been on there, some of the designers. Um, they are looking to fix quite a few things that happened with uh, uh, Fate of Indies and uh, War. Uh, mm -hmm. They're reworking the Force Gauge uh, to where it's going to be a little bit less of a tank game because the Force Gauge made some of the play actually very tanky. They're looking to do away with that. Uh, the play mats they have out that you can snag via uh, pledging, I think it's $62, is very, very gorgeous to look at. I think it's actually UFS artwork, if I'm not mistaken, from our World of Indies set. Yep. Uh, so definitely go hit up the Level 99 Games uh, website or the Kickstarter. Uh, I'll try and put a description for the Kickstarter, uh, link to the Kickstarter in the description from YouTube. Um, and what other goofy news do we have? Oh, Death Battle. Death Battle put out uh, Ken vs. Terry, which is K Street Fighter vs. King of Fighters, which we in UFS have never seen before once. Not once. <laughs> Not in recent memory. Uh, without spoiling anything, I'm just gonna say that Miles was a happy, happy boy. I could see that, like Terry being Ken. Like, I could see that. Okay, well, I mean, Terry beating Ken is kind of obvious if we're using like the anime to determine stuff because Ken has fought Akuma and Bison, and that's about it. Terry's fought the literal god Mars, so, uh, yeah, not to mention Geese and Krauser. Mm, true. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy news, uh, Kotaku, which, you know, it's Kotaku, so we take this with a grain of salt. I mean, Kotaku is whatever. They're 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 the BuzzFeed of gaming. Yeah, they are literally the BuzzFeed of gaming. So this like, is like when they decide, to, like they talk about the most strangest things sometimes. And I'm do. like, I look at my Facebook feed and I'm like, is this not safe for work? Should I should I not have this on my Facebook feed? I'm assuming you're talking about that one time Kotaku covered that Overwatch thing that just happened. Oh yeah, they covered. About, they talked about Oversnatch. That was we're, random. We're not even going into that. We're, we keep our show as family friendly as possible. But yeah, uh, yeah. Kotaku did uh, a small piece on the Final Fantasy trading card game. You get a sneak peek at uh, Light Cloud, uh, Water Cecil, and Dark Sephiroth. So you get to see what the character cards do. Um, Cloud's 8,000 power, Cecil's 8,000 power, and Sephiroth is 8,000 power in defense. Uh, this Cloud has his, 
Meteor. Uh, Meteor move, which is pitch another card with Cloud. Uh, tap t tap him and to any card mana. And uh, he causes 4,000 damage to each of the opponent's boards. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, Omni Slash, which I believe is Pitch Card in Cloud, uh, looks like three mana and tap Cloud, uh, destroy Target Ford, which is not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, Cecil is in his Paladin form, and he's five dot drop that says uh, opponents' effects must choose Cecil first if they are able to. Mm hmm. Uh, and then, uh, Sephiroth has First Striker, which means he gets to deal combat damage first whenever he's attacked. And says, when Sephiroth enters the field, break target, and then it's blank. So, that could be target forward or target backup. Either way, he's destroying a card on the field the moment he enters battle. Which is really, really good. Uh, we also get a picture of... God, I can't remember her name. I think it's Pim or something. Uh, chick from Final Fan, one of the girls from Final Fantasy Twelve. Uh, I I hated Final Fantasy Twelve, so don't ask me. Oh, I loved Final Fantasy Twelve. It was like the Game of Thrones of Final Fantasy. <sighs> Sigh. Um, and then we get the official launch date according to Kotaku. So again, guys, you know. Uh, oh, it, no, it's on their way. It's on the Final Fantasy Games website now. It's October 28th. Okay, so they're officially saying it's North America. Yep. Okay, so set one is going to be called Opus One. A uh, grand total of 216 cards. That's actually not too bad of a first base set. Uh, cards will be featuring artwork from Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's really impressive. Uh, mm. Decidia and the upcoming World of Final Fantasy, which I am really excited for. Uh, each card will uh, also, every card in the set can actually have a premium foil counterpart, so that means you can bling out the whole deck. Yep. Uh, and then of foil course, rare is all value. Oh yeah, and then of course the three stars we've talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, good Final Fantasy stuff. Uh, that's pretty much the gaming rundown. We already listed our PTCs. Uh, so it looks like that's it for us tonight. Uh, we'll come back. So guys, if you want, submit decks to Jesse and I. We'll try and cover that next week. Um, I'll, I got one thing to say, man. What's that? Uh, two, I can't wait. There's, I, we have to wait. Uh, let's see. Today is the 29th. Uh, I can't wait till Monday the tenth. Why is that? Of October, the, the the new the debut of the new Tiger Mask anime. Oh yeah. Starring many members of the New Japan Pro Wrestle of New Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> uh, so, uh, like I said, in the comments, like, subscribe. Uh, I will be leaving a comment for that uh, GoFundMe thing, guys. You could do that and just contribute anything or share it. I would highly, highly appreciate it. It would mean the world to me because she means the world to me because she's been my best friend for 17 years. And that's quite an accomplishment, and she needs all the help she can get. So, uh, other than that, we will see everybody next week for more UFS and other shenanigans, and we will see everybody later. Shenanigans. Word of the day. Yep. Bye, everybody. Night, everybody.